all the sap all over the place. Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I have time for two pieces. Yeah, you can do two. Okay, this first piece I'm going to do. I'm going to do two. The first one is going to be called An Etymologist's Last Love Letter. And by the way, FYI, no, this one is not original. It's by Jared Singer of New York City. But, and it's more commonly known as the Flies poem. Dear Samantha, I'm sorry, but we have to get a divorce. I know that's an odd way to start a love letter, but let me explain. It's not you. It's definitely not me. It's just that human beings don't love as well as insects do, and I, I love you far too much to let what we have be ruined by the failings of our species. I saw the way you looked at the waiter last night. I know you would never do anything you would never do, but still, I saw the way you looked at the waiter last night. Did you know that when a female fly accepts the pheromones put off by a male fly, it rewrites her brains, destroys the receptors for pheromones, sensing this change, the male fly does the same. What this means is that when two flies love each other, they do it so hard that they literally can never love anything else ever again. If one of those two flies dies before procreation can occur, that is the end of both sets. Genetic code. That would have broken Now that is dedication. When I broke up with Elizabeth, we spent the next three days separating out everything we had bought together. Like somehow, if, we, if I knew which pots were mine, if I knew which stripes were mine, somehow the pain would go away. This is not true. When two praying mantises mate, the nervous system of the male begins to shut down. While he still has control over his motor functions, he flops over onto his back, exposing his soft underbelly up to his lover like a gift. She then proceeds to lovingly, and I do mean lovingly, dice him into small little pieces. She scoops every little morsel up into her mouth. She wastes nothing. You want to give him more? She does this. So that when their children are born, she has a first a meal to regurgitate to them. Now that is selflessness. I can never do that for you! So I have a new plan. I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to spend the rest of my life committing petty injustices. I will jaywalk at every opportunity. I will steal shit I can easily afford. I will be rude to strangers. I hope you do the same. I hope reincarnation is real. I hope our petty crimes are enough to, for us to be reborn as lesser creatures. I hope we come back as flies so that we can love each other as hard as we were meant to. Yeah! I move. Woo! When I move, you move. Okay. The second one I wrote specifically for tonight. Oh my God. Uh, I. What is this one going to be called? Pants, are ah, shit. Theories, <laughs> journeys, <laughs> and love. Just a theory. I hear that a lot. As if the person saying it honestly believes that theories are merely stray thoughts, like 
Whoa. The platypus is proof that God is a toker, bro. Something brought up in passing and nothing more. This could not be further from the truth. It has been said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The stray thought is that single first step. The theory only comes along many hundreds of miles later, after that stray thought has been well tested on the field. These are, mu these are as much idle thoughts as the concept of an empty gasoline tank leaving you stranded in the desert. For the past 11 months, I have been conflicted with two. Uh, uh, I have been conflicted with the possibility of two seemingly contradictory theories, two truths of life from two paths which do not work well together at all. I broke up with the fairy princess. When, when I broke up with the fairy princess, it was because I finally figured out and tested that first theory. I'd been trying to find love for years by this point, and seemingly in all the wrong places. Little did I know that I was trying to find that love again. A memory I had forced my brain to suppress. I had forced myself to forget that I had known love once before. So it comes to no surprise that when I was with the fairy princess, I became convinced that love the fairy tale concept of unconditional love did not exist. So, to do us both a favor, I broke up with her. I cannot be with someone who made me realize such a truth, and she needed that fairy tale unconditional love that I knew I could not provide for her. When you and I decided to run the experiment that is this relationship, I could not have predicted finding another theory. When we first kissed, Alec. we embarked on a journey that may never end. A journey which, long sen which has long since proven me wrong. Now that I am with you, I realize that I do no love. The fairy tale view of unconditional love, I now know with you, my own personal happily ever after. I remember that I have known love in the past. Now, in the ashes of two relationships past, I realize that I know love with you. So, with that in mind, I have a single question. Just one. Rebecca <laughs> Myers? Will you marry me?